And right now you are getting a live look into the courthouse in Colladen County. The person you see there, that is the lead prosecutor in the uh, case for the state. That is Creighton Waters, and he is now delivering the opening statements in the Murdoch murder trial. Murdoch, Alec Murdoch, charged with the murders of his wife Maggie and their youngest son Paul back in 2021. Earlier today, the 12 jurors who will decide Murdoch's guilt or innocence took their seats in the courtroom. We begin our coverage with Raphael James and Blair Stable. They're at the Culloden County Courthouse in Walterboro. We'll get to Blair in just a moment, but first we go to Raphael. Roth, the judge made quick work of getting that jury in place, and now the trial is underway. That's right, and the 12 jurors and the six alternates are in place, and we'll talk about those uh, in a little bit, but the opening statements have gotten started. The state is presenting its opening arguments right now in front of the jury. We saw Buster Murdoch come into the courtroom. He is one of the witnesses listed on the defense list to testify. It's still early in the case, but he did come into the courtroom today. He is there now as opening statements are getting underway. I want to go to Blair Sable, who has more insight into the opening statements and the process so far. Well, yeah, Raphael, uh Creighton Waters, as Ann mentioned, the lead prosecutor in this case, wasted no time painting a picture for the jury, oftentimes a graphic one. Neither Paul nor Maggie had any defensive wounds. Neither one of them had any defensive wounds. As if they didn't see a threat coming from their attacker. Yeah, you heard him there, him saying that uh, that Maggie and Paul uh, apparently did not see a threat from their attacker, alluding to uh, that Alec Murdoch, their husband and father, uh, was possibly responsible for the crime. Now, he also went on to say that cell phone data will prove that Murdoch was at the scene of the crime near the dog kennels. That contradicts his alibi that he was visiting his mother in Varnville about 20 minutes away that night. Now, he also previewed uh, several pieces of forensic evidence that we'll see, body camera footage and more as this trial goes on. Uh, and Creighton Waters, who works for the Attorney General's office, he is sort of out of his element in this case. They don't usually try murder cases, but on the opposite side of things, Dick Harputley and the lead defense attorney, he is known for his showmanship, and he should be coming up in the next few minutes to present his opening arguments in the case. Roth? All right, Blair, thank you very much for that. And we want to give you a little bit of insight into this jury that was selected earlier this morning. They were sworn in about 1 o'clock, and the jury's made up of four white men, six white women, two black women. The alternates include three white men, one black man, and two black women. Now, when Judge Newman dismissed the other jurors, uh, they were free to go. And as they were walking out of the courthouse, one of them came up to me and said she was somewhat disappointed. Her name is Margot, and she was looking forward to being on the jury. I just want to hear the facts. I would like to be there to know what really happened. Um, but since I'm not, I'll follow the news and I'll see what happens. And I just pray for the best for him and everyone involved. Margot is not originally from the area. She says she's a transplant, but like so many other people around here, she ha does have a keen interest in what happens in this case. From the Collin County Courthouse, I'm Raphael James. Back to you. All right, Roth, thank you. And remember to get real-time updates on the latest developments in the Alec Murdoch murder trial. Head to live5news.com and check out our live blog. Our team of digital journalists following the trial closely to provide updates throughout each day for you.